മണ്ഡ്യ മിഷൻ ലീഗിലെ എല്ലാ അംഗങ്ങൾക്കും ആദ്യമേ തന്നെ ഈശമിശിഖായ്ക്ക് സ്തുതിയായിരിക്കും ഇന്ന് നമ്മൾ പേഴ്സണാലിറ്റി ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റിൻ്റെയും സ്റ്റഡി ടെക്നിക്സിൻ്റെയും ക്ലാസ്സിലേക്ക് കടന്നിരിക്കുകയാണ് സാധാരണയായി നമ്മൾ പത്തിലും പന്ത്രണ്ടിലും പഠിക്കുന്ന കുട്ടികൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഈ പ്രോഗ്രാം എല്ലാ വർഷവും അറേഞ്ച് ചെയ്യുന്നത് മിഷൻ ലീഗിൻ്റെ തന്നെ ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട ഒരു ലക്ഷ്യമാണല്ലോ വ്യക്തിത്വ വികസനം വ്യക്തിത്വ വികാസം സംഭവിക്കുന്നതിലൂടെ നമ്മൾ ജീവിക്കുന്ന പ്രദേശത്തിനും നമ്മുടെ രാജ്യത്തിനുമൊക്കെ മാതൃകകളായി തീരുവാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് മറ്റൊരു ക്രിസ്തുവായി തീരുവാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ പരിശ്രമിക്കുന്നത് ഇന്നത്തെ സുവിശേഷം നമ്മളെ ഓർമ്മപ്പെടുത്തുന്നത് ദൂർത്തുപുത്രൻ്റെ ഉപമയാണ് ദൂർത്തുപുത്രൻ തിരിച്ചു വരുമ്പോൾ സ്നേഹപിതാവ് പറയുന്നുണ്ട് ഇവൻ മൃതനായിരുന്നു ഇന്നിവൻ ജീവിക്കുന്നു ജീവിക്കുന്നവരാകുവാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ടാണല്ലോ നമ്മൾ വ്യക്തിത്വ വികാസത്തിലേക്കൊക്കെ ഏറ്റവും കൂടുതൽ ഊന്നൽ കൽ ഊന്നൽ നൽകുന്നത് നമ്മുടെ കുഞ്ഞുമക്കൾ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് പത്തിലും പന്ത്രണ്ടിലും പരീക്ഷ എഴുതുവാനായി ഒരുങ്ങിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന മക്കൾക്ക് നല്ല വർഷം ആശംസിക്കുന്നു നല്ല പഠനം ആശംസിക്കുന്നു നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഈ ക്ലാസ് കൂടുതൽ ഉപകാരപ്രദമാകട്ടെ എന്ന് ആശംസിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നു ഇന്ന് നമുക്ക് വേണ്ടി ക്ലാസ്സുകൾ നയിക്കുന്നത് പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട ജെ സി ടീച്ചറാണ് വർഷങ്ങളായിട്ട് ജെ സി ടീച്ചർ നമ്മളുടെ മിഷൻ ലീഗിന് വേണ്ടി ഈ ക്ലാസ് ഒരുങ്ങുകയും നമ്മളെ പ്രബുദ്ധരാക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് ടീച്ചറിന് ഏറെ സ്നേഹത്തോടെ ഈ ക്ലാസ്സുകളിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു അതുപോലെ ഇന്നേ ദിവസം ഈ ക്ലാസ്സിനായി ഒരുങ്ങിയെത്തിയിരിക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ കുഞ്ഞു മിഷണറിമാർക്കും നല്ല ദിവസം ആശംസിക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുന്നു ദൈവം നമ്മളെല്ലാവരെയും അനുഗ്രഹിക്കട്ടെ this to shall pass a very good morning to all our dear students parents and viewers a very warm welcome and i understand that we are all going through these very unprecedented times and there is so much that is happening around us but i hope the next few minutes would be an enlightening session for all of you because we are here to learn on how to make our lives better and improve our study techniques I thought I'd start the program with a small uh, verse from Helen Steiner's Rice poem This Too Shall Pass it says If I can endure for this minute whatever is happening to me no matter how heavy my heart is or how dark the moment may be if I can remain calm and quiet with all the world crashing about me secure in the knowledge God loves me when everyone else seems to doubt me if i can but keep on believing what i know in my heart to be true that darkness will fade with the morning and that this will pass away too then nothing in life can defeat me for as, lo- as long as this knowledge remains i can suffer whatever is happening for i know god will break all of the chains that are binding me tight in the darkness and trying to fill me with fear for there is no night without dawning and i know that my morning is near so i guess there is hope for all of us in spite of everything that is all around us the challenging times the difficult situations the experiences that we are facing through and above all the the tension of having your exams around the corner especially for the last one one and a half years life has been very very different with the online and remote learning and we've all made a complete switch and turnover but i'm sure that if we are in focus and we have a positive mind and a positive attitude we will be able to overcome every challenge that is ahead of us i just want you all to take a few seconds and look into yourselves and reflect upon some of the things you're thankful for we call it a moment of gratitude because every time we are thankful every time we have a heart of gratitude every time we count our blessings we tend to change and gratitude is a way of healing all the problems in our lives when we start looking at the positives when we start looking at the good side of things we forget our worries and that will give us the strength to overcome all challenges so take a few seconds of reflection what is it that you are thankful for this morning count your blessings count it in your mind count it in your heart 
Maybe you're thankful for the food on the table. Maybe you're thankful for your parents. Maybe you're thankful for the roof above your head. Maybe you're thankful for this opportunity that you have right now to be listening to a program that's going to enhance your study skills. Whatever it is, you know, starting your day and ending your day with a note and a sense of gratitude is the beginning of healing. So this session today includes why study? Big question, why study? Who are super students? What are some of the study techniques? What are some of the study tips during stay at home? Because all of us, including your parents, most of us, right? We are working from home, sitting at home and doing our work. So what are some of the tips, easy practical tips that you can follow to make your study time better and easy for you? What are some of the examination tips? How do you manage your time? and also how to stay positive. So coming to our first question, why study? Big question, right? You might think of a lot of people who have not studied and made it big in life. And then I'm sure a lot of you would be asking yourselves, why study? You know, people are still doing well. But let me tell you, studying is going to take you to another level. Studying is going to give you the knowledge. Study is going to give you the, the skills the study is going to give you the right attitude. Uh, education is something that is going to empower you, right? And also, when you look at your goals or your dreams ahead of you, I'm sure most of you want to get into the best of colleges, right? And there's a lot of competition out there. Otherwise, you can settle for the ordinary. I'm sure a lot of you have a lot of dreams that you want to make it big in life. Uh, at least you want to have a good, great college experience. So the first point there itself is answered, right? You need to study. If you do not study, you, not, you do not get the grades. And if you do not get the grades, you do not make it to a good college or a good institution because it has its own charm, it has its own opportunities and facilities, which is why your parents are always behind your back saying, study, get good grades. They have a reason for that. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. These are words of Nelson Mandela. And this is exactly what I'm trying to communicate to you, that it is a powerful weapon in your hands. You would never regret having had a good education. You would never regret having had knowledge about things, um, you know, to develop the right attitude to deal with your own life and with all the problems around you. So this comes through education. When you go to school, when you study, when you, when you interact, and you, you get to develop a lot of these skills. And also, um, the character formation happens through education. If you look at some of these famous personalities uh, that you see, we have Saina Nehwal, we have Abdul Kalam, we have Indra Nui, we have our Prime Minister of New Zealand, we have Sundar Pichai, we have Elon Musk, your favorite, I'm sure. And of course, the music, um, you know, the magnet, um, A.R. Rahman. So if you look at all these people, I would like to give you a small insight into their educational background as well. Saina Nehwal studied and passed out of NIRD, National Institute of Rural Development, Hyderabad. Our famous person, my favorite, of course, Abdul Kalam, late Shri Abdul Kalam, passed out of uh, uh, MIT Chennai. Uh, Indra Nui of PepsiCo, the famous Indra Nui, fam uh, you know, one of the greatest women leaders we've ever had, has passed out from IM Calcutta. Uh, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern of New Zealand passed out from the University of Waikato. Our own favorite, Sundar Pichai, Yes, a uh, young leader again is, an, is a graduate uh, who did his MS from Stanford and MBA from Wharton School. Elon Musk, yes, do you know where he's from? He's from the University of Pennsylvania. And of course, A.R. Rahman from ACC Chennai, uh, I'm sorry, MCC Chennai and Trinity College of Music, Oxford University. So these people have all had a solid education, which brings us to the point again, study is important. Education is important. Mahatma Gandhi said, if we want to reach real peace in this world, real peace in this world, we should start educating children. Like I said earlier, education is about building the knowledge, 
building the right set of skills and developing the right attitude combined together makes it your character and that is the essence of life you know when you go for a job uh, most companies you know look at your skills and your you know your knowledge and they test you and they interview and they have many technical rounds and everything but a study by Harvard University says that 85% of the time a candidate gets recruited is not for the skills but for the attitude right which means it is all about your non-technical part right your attitude which is so important and therefore that is something that you gain through education and schooling what is the importance of education and why is education important? Because education gives you knowledge. It teaches you lessons on humanity. Education comprises good thoughts in human beings. Educations tell people how to think, how to work properly and how to take decisions. Education contributes to human development and human development leads to a good society. Education gives us employment and it also gives us an identity. Education highlights the human talents. Education leads to innovations and discoveries. And educations, or education also develops a meaningful outlook to life. So therefore, education is important. Now coming to who or what makes a super student. You know, many times we have this notion that super student is somebody who does very well in class, who's the topper of the class and, you know, consistently the first rank, second rank student. And then I'm sure people around you would also compare and say that super student, watch him, watch her, learn from him, learn from her, of course. With all due respect for the toppers sitting here and listening, definitely there's a lot of hard work behind it. But for the others... I'm talking about the majority who have not ever come to the top five spots. It's okay. Because I think to me, a super student is one who is a self-starter. When we say self-starter, doesn't have to be told to do something, right? So a super student can be a self-starter, taking initiative by himself or herself without being nudged, without being pushed, right? So maybe there's, there's something wrong somewhere and, you know, you have the presence of mind to take action. That's a self-starter. Maybe somebody is not willing to do something, but you take the chance and you take the opportunity and you move forward. So that's a self-starter. Super student is also a self-starter. Super students are those who take responsibility for their lives. We say self-management. Managing yourself, and if you're able to manage yourself, you're able to manage people around you and things around you, right? So taking responsibility for your own life, that makes a super student, to be responsible. Also, I believe that if you make a mistake and you're ready to acknowledge and say sorry or apologize, that makes you a very responsible person as well, because that is what makes a super student too. A super student can have cordial relationship with people around, be it your friends. So super students will have a lot of friends, popular. Super students also get along well with teachers, right? With your parents, with people, and you know how to deal with people. You know how to build a relationship with people. So that makes a super student. Discipline. Discipline is not about having a very neat, clean bed or a table, right? Discipline is also what you think, what you speak. That is also discipline. So if you do not use those bad words, language, there is a certain discipline about you and that makes you a super student. Sense of respect starts with your own, right? Self-respect and respect for others. If you have this, there you are, a super student. Commitment, right? You take up something, but you are committed to it. Okay, You want to finish it and just not finish it, but put in your heart, soul and everything into it and finish the work. That shows your commitment to something, makes you a super student. Super students are also critical thinkers. They analyze, they understand, they, they you know, uh, dissect uh, things to understand why something happened, what is the reason behind it, or maybe, you know, something that, some experience that they've had or something that they saw, they try to connect the dots, so they're critical thinkers, right? That makes you a super student. 
Super students are independent learners. You know, if you started studying by your own at a very young age, I think, you know, the best time to start being on your own is around fourth or fifth standard, where you don't have to have your mother sitting next to you and telling you, do this, do your homework, right? But you're independent and your parents trust you and you're consistent with your work. That makes you a super student. So you're an independent learner. You need not be told what to do. And you, you explore, you find opportunities to learn. That makes you a super student. Super students are also very curious. You know, when I say curious, not about somebody else's life and gossip, I mean to say you're curious to know things. You, you're curious to understand, you know, the why of things. Uh, I always ask this, you know, do we have a curious mind? You see a bulb or let's say you see a phone and you ask these questions, who invented the phone? When was the phone invented? What is the use of this particular phone? What are the features? Uh, where was it invented? By whom was it invented? You know, start probing and ask these questions. That's going to expand your mind. So always have a curious bend of mind. Keep questioning, keep asking. That makes you a super student. And of course, keeping yourself updated. How many of you are in the habit of reading the daily newspaper? Forget newspaper, at least daily news. Get into the habit. You know how much time it takes? Honestly, if you were to just scan through the daily news, it won't take you more than five or 10 minutes, but get into the habit. You might think, oh, I have so much to study. Oh, I don't have to do it like my parents are doing, but it's good to be um, abreast with whatever news is happening around you, right? That makes you a super student. And also, a super student is one who asks relevant questions. You know, we can be listening to our teacher, listening to our parents, but sometimes it's also good to have it the other way around, you know, ask questions. When in doubt, ask, and that would help you clarify a lot of things and expand your mind again, right? So these are things which make a super student. So the next time somebody tells you, watch that super student and learn, ask yourself, I have a few of these. I believe I'm a super student too. You don't have to ask anybody to brand you as a super student. Brand yourself because you have these qualities and that sets you apart from the rest of them, all right? And super students also get involved in extracurricular activities. Now, don't give excuses that you don't have time during COVID. You have plenty of time. You're saving on travel. You're saving on going out for tuitions and coming home. And you have 24 bar 7 Wi-Fi. So what's your excuse, right? So learn something. Of course, it's not going to be the same as how it is when you step out of the house, but at least there are opportunities for you to learn. So get involved and be a self-learner. Be involved in extracurricular activities as well and maintain a positive attitude. If you cannot believe in yourself, nobody else can. So always have this thing, I can, I will, I want to. And that's all it takes to make you develop the right mindset and to move forward. So coming to study skills and what are the basics of study skills, you know, study skills and getting into this habit of having a pattern and routine is not a, is, it's not a, you know, unbelievable or unimaginable thing. Everybody can follow that, provided you follow some of these, you know, techniques and stick to the basics. So what are these basics? All you have to do to manage your study well is to manage your time. You know, if you can prioritize your time, I'll be talking about it a little later, but if you can manage your time, if you can take a few things by allotting fixed time for certain things, of course, the timings can change, but, you know, consistent in that, you're going to be good in your, you're going to excel in your studies as well, and you won't find it stressful. So managing your time, which means you set apart time to study, you set apart time for your private quiet time, you set apart time for your, I'm sure a lot of you are into that gaming or whatever, but have fixed times for everything every day and that will help you um, manage things better. Take breaks. Nobody wants you to sit and study from, you know, continuously and we know what's happening because let me also tell you I'm a mother of two boys um, and my younger ones in the ninth standard. So I know what is actually happening in the world out there. I really know what is happening during the study time how much of cross conversation happens, how much of gaming happens, how much of text exchanging happens. But I think keeping aside all your distractions, if you really want to excel, because please understand, you know, you could be sitting at home and doing your studying, 
but the exams will still happen, the admissions will still go on, nothing there changes, right? So how do you get there? So you have no excuse, right? And you cannot blame anybody for that because your parents have given you Wi-Fi or internet connection and they trust you and they believe that you're learning. And if you're going to misuse that time, you're going to be the loser. So the choice is yours, right? Uh, exercise might think, oh, we're not allowed to go out. Who asked you to go out? Do it in the house. Go to your terrace. Climb the staircase up and down 10 times. That's exercise, right? Or you just, you know, just bounce the ball around the house or do whatever it is, but get into some kind of a physical activity which is really important for your mind, especially during exam time, before exams. Like I said, prioritizing matters. Your activities, what should I do today? What should I do first? What should I do towards the end? What should I spend less time on? You must have a mental frame of things. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be like a clutter box, right? Too many things going on inside and you don't know what to do and where to start. So just calm yourself, remove the clutter and get into an organized way of studying and things will work. Um, be clear of your schedule. Right? You could have a schedule, a daily schedule, a weekly schedule or whatever, but stick to that. Right? Of course, you can, you can, it can change time to time, uh, but you know, following a little bit in tune with whatever you have set for yourself will help you crack the exams well. When in need, ask for help. I think most of us hesitate to do that. Either it's your ego which is stopping you from asking for help or you feel you're overconfident and you don't need anybody's help. Let me tell you, teachers actually appreciate when you reach out and ask for help. And I'm sure your teachers are willing to help you, especially during these times. So please make use of that opportunity. If you don't understand something, keep your ego and pride and everything. Be humble. Reach out to your friend or your teacher. Clear all your doubts, right? And the most important thing is relax. We are not here to tell you don't watch television, don't do this, don't do that, what you love doing. You must do that. But you must find time to do your studies and when you have the extra time or plan in such a way that you take everything along together. So therefore you need to relax. You need to chat with your friends. You need to have a Zoom meeting. You need to connect with your friends. You need to whatever, you know, whatever way, be in touch with people around you or whatever you call relaxation, right? Maybe some music, maybe a movie once in a while. Nothing wrong with that, but learn to relax. So these are the study skills basics. Okay. Now, um, you know, we've all switched from offline classes to online mode. I still remember the first uh, month, you know, last year, March, when the pandemic and the lockdown was announced. My, both my boys were screaming and yelling like, you know, holidays, no exams, exams cancelled. And, you know, it was like a celebration and time of festivity because, you know, you, you, don't, you don't want to go to school. But I'm sure most of us experience that excitement and then the excitement died out, right? When reality hit us, when we realize that this is going to stay with us for a long time and that we're not going to meet people, especially our friends, right? It hit you. It hit you really hard. A um, lot of shift has happened from last year to this year, if you see. Complete shift in our education system, education style, learning methodology. Everything has changed, right? And maybe this is here to stay. Maybe we're not going to, of course, we'll go back to school, but this can continue. Your lessons, your homework, your assignments can com continue in an online mode. So what are some of the things to keep in mind? I think I'll, I, I, I thought I would share a few tips with you on the switch to remote learning and what do you need to be prepared for. Most importantly, when you're sitting for an online class, right? Be well-dressed. It's, it's important. It matters. It shows, you know, talking about the super student part, the discipline, the commitment and everything, that comes with this. Maybe for you it's a tedious stuff. Who cares? I'll turn my camera off. No. There's a certain discipline to it. Get into your formal clothes or whatever, right? And there's a certain discipline. It makes you feel like you're actually sitting in class. That's, that's something that we can do to make the environment conducive, learning conducive, right? Create a workspace. Now, don't keep shifting from room to room, place to place every day. Create a small workplace, which is your place for you to sit and study and do your work, right? So that, that, that needs to be in place. 
establish a routine as I told you, right? Whether maybe you have classes from 8.30 to 12.30 or 1 o'clock, then you have maybe tuitions and maybe a music lesson in the evening. But kind of establish a routine so you know this is how your day is going to be. And also plan your weekends, right? Weekend is a time when you're, most of you do not have any schedules or routine, right? But it's good to get into a system, right? And that will fall in place. Like I said, don't neglect any area of your life. You must have everything as part of that. But set schedules and set time for it. So that's important. Setting boundaries. If you are addicted to WhatsApp, or Instagram, okay, that's your world, Instagram, or a YouTube, or, you know, whatever it is, Netflix, or whatever, please set boundaries, and don't expect your parents to set it for you. If you want to be serious about your life, and your future, you need to set the boundaries for yourself. You need to take charge. You need to take control. So tell yourself, I'm going to keep the phone aside for a few hours till I finish this. And let me tell you, the phone is the biggest distraction. Believe, I don't have to give you a class on that, right? You know if your phone is there in front of you, when you're reading something, you're tempted to look at it. Then you read, then you, nothing gets into your head. Keep it away, like, keep it away for some time. You know, when you play a game of football, you won't multitask, like your focus is on the game, right? Or when you're doing a guitar class or something, you wouldn't be distracted with other things. Why you can commit there and not here, right? So just... Make sure that you take responsibility and set boundaries. And also how much time you need to give your friends, how much time you need to while away. You are in charge, right? And you're not a kid anymore. You don't have to be told what to do. You can take control and charge of your life, right? So set boundaries. Turn off all your distractions, as I said, your, you know, media. Social media is the biggest distraction for all of us. Again, if you feel it's getting too much uh, into your head and hands and you know it's it's controlling you you know that's what happened when addictions when you're addicted to something that thing starts controlling your life right so if you think instagram is controlling your daily schedule turn it off disable it for a few days disable it for a few hours and then you'll feel okay not depending on it but it's difficult to do that but try doing that and i'm i'm, I'm very sure that it'll work and you'll understand how much of time goes in unwanted distractions which are not productive all right take breaks whenever required ask questions and please understand that it's absolutely normal to feel anxious this is something that you all need to take exams online we'll always have tension and especially board exams right uh, let me tell you 10 standard board or 12 standard board is just one of the milestones your life is just lying ahead of you Till the exam happens, you're like, 10 board, 12th board exam. Once it is over, you feel it's over, you know, because there's something else that you have forward and ahead of you. And as life moves forward, you realize uh, that was easier, right? Because when my son finished his 10th, he was like, 10th exams are over. Then when he wrote his 11th, he's like, 11th exams, 10th was nothing. When he came to his 12th, of course, cakewalk, no exams, right? But uh, definitely, you know, the marks uh, did matter on how your performance was in school for admissions, right? So let's not, let's not think that because it's online, because it's remote learning, exams are not so important. They are important because when it comes to admissions, it's based on your marks, what you've done in school, and also based on the knowledge that you have acquired. Again, what I would like to share from my personal experiences, my older son, did not write his board exams, 12 standard board exams. But when he went for the college interviews, he was asked all concepts and theories from what he had studied. So if you're thorough with that, you can crack it, right? You can get through. But if you're not thorough with that, you stand to lose an opportunity or a golden chance. So the choice is yours. Always have a dedicated learning space. As I said, Choose a space that is separate from your relaxation area. You can watch TV elsewhere, sleep elsewhere, but study has to be in a particular fixed place, right? And that will help you concentrate. Always stay on track, okay? What are the subjects? What are the expectations from each course? What are the assignments that need to be submitted, right? When are the exams, right? Do you have the notes? Do you have the material? Make sure that you are in you know, you're organized and that you know what is happening around you. Keep checking your email, keep updating yourself on the group, right? Your class group, whether you've missed out some information, 
So keep connecting with your friends because that will help you know that you're staying on track. Okay. If you've missed a class, I've noticed this again. We are very lazy to go back and see the recorded class. I don't think anybody follows that. But the good thing about that is if you visit that, you do not forget. Otherwise, there's going to be a break in your learning. As it is, there's been a big cut and break from last year to this year, right? But you need to pick off from where you left. So it would be a good, um, you know, discipline if you can go back to the recorded sessions and at least glance or run through it so you know what happened and you're on track, all right? Identify the technology requirements, right? See if your system is compatible. Make sure before your exam or any important event, your Wi-Fi stability or whatever it is, right, is uninterrupted because that can psych you up, that can make you very nervous. So ensure that and do a few trial runs. You know, I would advise before the exam, before a test, do a trial run with, you know, your family members or your friends to ensure that everything is in place and you're ready for it, right? Shut the door, shut out noise and just stay focused. A few deep breaths before you attempt would really help, right? Sleeping the previous night, eating, before an exam, all these are things that are really necessary, which you might neglect because of the nervousness, but it is important and it will help you focus. Okay. And uh, also make sure if there is a technical glitch or whatever, you know, who are you going to run to? Who are you going to approach? Who are you going to reach out to? Who do you need to connect with? All right. So keep those things before you so that if there is a breakdown, you know what to do at that point of time instead of getting panicky. Connect with your learning community. Now, who's your learning community? Your classmates, right? So to stay engaged, communicate with your teachers, your friends. Once in a while, have discussions around what was done in class. So that will help you be connected to the learning that is happening. Share your learning and study strategies with your friends, okay? So that, you know, this is the time I think we are getting more and more closer to our friends, right? Because we can't be with them. At least we are virtually connected. So connect, share your ideas, share your thoughts, sh share your knowledge. You know, I've again seen, seen this, you know, uh, many times students. Okay. So I've noticed many times that, you know, students get into a virtual classroom. I mean, not, not a classroom, informal peer learning, which is, you know, five or six of your close friends get together. And maybe before a test or something, you just discuss the key points and you help each other. I think that's a good habit, provided you don't waste time, right? But if you're serious, maybe in half an hour or 45 minutes, you all say a few points about the topic, you repeat it, and that's a learning for you because it's a virtual mode, right? It's like group learning, right? So peer learning as we call it. So also uh, be proactive in reaching out to your teachers or those who can help you out during this time, right? Very important, as I said, and I'm repeating it again and again, whether you're at home or attending an offline class, routine is something which is really important when it comes to study skills, a daily structure, okay? Maybe you don't follow it strictly, but you have an idea between this time, this is what I can do, this is what I can do from this time to this time. So a kind of a structure, which we call a daily routine, which is going to help you, right? Whether you're going to class or not going to class. Then include a morning ritual, like, as I said, you know, getting dressed for class, eating breakfast before your class, right? Or maybe just half an hour of, you know, something, you know, maybe some of you would spend time in prayer or meditation or just calming yourself, right? Before the actual class starts, instead of the last minute rush, eight o'clock starts, class starts and 7.55, your alarm is buzzing and you jump out of bed and, you know, you're not brushed your teeth. Why hassle yourself, right? So make sure that you you plan your day so that you don't get stressed out, all right? Take breaks to help keep you engaged and alert, okay? So that's about, um, you know, the remote learning. Moving on to the next part of our session, which is study techniques. I'm going to share a few study techniques which will help you. As I said, pandemic is hitting us left, right and center and we are all anticipating the third wave. So there is a big question whether we are going to go back to school or not, right? All of us are living in that uncertainty. Like I said, 
exams will continue, admissions will go on because no college has shut down, no university has shut down, right? No companies have shut down, big companies. So if you really want to get there, you still have to continue doing these things. So whether you're at home or whether you're going to class, these are some of the study techniques that you can practice which will help you learn and understand your lessons better. So what are these study techniques? A few that I would like to share. One is called FRT. It's called fast revision technique. Okay. Doesn't mean you finish everything fast and you're done with it. No. Fast revision technique means let's take a topic or a subject or a concept or whatever. Okay. You learn it. You do a daily revision. You spend about 10 minutes reading it. Okay. After a week, after a week, you come back to it. Okay. And again, it takes only 10 minutes for you to revisit that what you did a week ago. All right. That's called a weekly revision. Come back to it a month later again, right? Repeat the process. And if you look at it, that concept or that learning is going to stay with you for a long time. We call it the fast revision technique. I repeat, learn the concept, do a daily revision, all right? A weekly revision and a monthly revision, all right? So that's what we mean by FRT. Then there's something called as SQ3R. S Q. 3R. And what does that mean? S stands for survey. Okay. So uh, I'll say what it means. Survey, question and the three R's are read, recite and review. Okay. So let's say you're going to a mall. Okay. A new mall. And you know there's so much happening in the mall. What do you normally get I mean, what do you go looking for in the first place? You would go to that map, right? You would go to that map and you'll survey the mall at a glance, right? And then you see a few brand names and few of those, you know, shops or whatever. And then you know what you want and then you visit there. And you know it's on this particular floor, uh, on this, at this location and you follow that, right? It's a map and you survey it. So you're like scanning all over. So SQ3R is something like that. Let's say you have a subject like physics, like a mountain in front of you. Initial uh, thing is to just survey. What are the topics? How many chapters? How many do I know? How many do I have notes for? Okay, how many I didn't attend? How many I'm totally blank about? How much is over? How much is left over? Everything, right? You do a general survey. Then you choose your subject or topic or whatever, chapter, whatever, okay? And let's say you're sitting down to study. So the next thing is framing questions around that, right? Around that chapter. So you read through it, you survey it, and then you frame a few questions. You look at the questions that are there, okay? Another technique to follow after that is read it, okay? So you've surveyed, you've questioned a few things, and you read it, okay? You read the entire thing. When you read it, you understand something. And following that, what you do is recite. You know, recite is like how as children we were taught to recite poems, right? Reciting doesn't mean memorizing and verbatim saying it, right? Reciting is you, you learn it, you understand it, and you say it in your own words. And maybe you try to check whether you're saying the right thing, right? Reciting something as you learned it, okay? And the last thing is reviewing it. Review means go back to it, right? So this is what is called as the survey, question, read, recite, review uh, methodology, which is also called as SQ3R, okay? Which can come of use to you. Then there's something called as PQRST, okay? P stands for preview. Again, uh, going back to our daily, you know, you might have seen your parents or you might be in the habit of doing this, the morning newspaper, right? Um, so first thing that you do is you skim and scan through the entire. And for those of you who love sports, you'll go to the sports page first, right? Uh, for some of it, maybe your parents or your father might, you know, somebody in the family, mother or father might, you know, be interested in the business section. Somebody might be interested in the headlines, right? So what do you do? You're skimming and scanning the text the entire thing to understand what it is. So preview. So when you sit down to study a particular lesson, just turn the pages, flip through and see, preview the entire thing, skim and scan. Again, Q stands for question. Ask yourself questions about what you have read. Okay, so you look through it. Uh, maybe you, you know, you understand a few things then you ask a few questions, read it. Okay, again, repeat of the similar, similarly, of, um, similar to what we discussed earlier, read it. Then you summarize it. Summaries, summarizing is putting, putting it in your own words, all right? 
summarize it. And finally, uh, T stands for test yourself. Um, test yourself means, um, you know, ask yourself a few questions and whether you're able to answer or not. Okay, so this is what the PQRST method is. The next technique is called as brain mapping. This is a very interesting technique where you know you, you put a particular concept or a topic in the center of a page, right? So you take out your book and put the concept in the center. And usually what they say is you draw the picture. Like let's say you're studying about the brain, okay? So you put the picture of the brain or rough sketch of the brain and then you map out lines from the brain, center of the brain. So anything connected to the brain, what are some of the rela related, you know, topics or uh, something, you know, connected to that particular uh, um, central topic and then branch out. From that branch, some other idea comes out. From that, another thing. So what happens is in five minutes, you have a vein or, you know, a web, what we call as, you know, different lines connected to each other and all coming down to the central topic or thought. That's called um, brain mapping, right? So that's a very interesting technique. And what, 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 how this will help you is, you know, before your exams, you just have to pull out this paper and read or look at this picture and this map, and that will help you recollect whatever you have studied. All right. So that's one of the techniques. Try speed counting. 1 to 100, 1 to 3, 4, 5, 6 to 100. Count backwards, 199, 98, 97, 96, okay? As fast as you can, all right? A to Z, A, B, C, D. Go back, Z, Y, X, okay? That's training your mind. Then you can also try A1, B2, C3. Go up to Z26 and try a reverse, all right? So these are things which will help you build your memory. All right, which will help your brain also. It's an exercise and you don't have to do it every day. Whenever you feel like doing, get into these habits, right? Remember, you can always remember if you never forget. So what are the things to keep in mind before your exams? Eat right, okay? Eat properly and eat light food. Don't get into junk food and, you know, empty stomach and, you know, you'll have ulcers and you'll have all kinds of, you know, uneasiness. So eat right, sleep right. They say that, you know, an average human body for your age requires at least seven to eight hours of sleep. If you're sleeping less than seven hours, please change your sleep habits. It's not good for you. It's not good for your body and that will affect your mind. So please do not um, deprive yourself of good sleep. Always learn something new. Okay, look around. There's so many things available these days, right, for you to learn. So learn something new and that will keep your energy levels high and that will keep you motivated and help you de-stress yourself. Exercise regularly and teaching or sharing information with others is also a good way of retaining information. So if you learn something, be excited about sharing that with your good friend. Okay, so when you teach, you learn more. How do you eat a roti? or a pizza. You don't stuff the entire thing into your mouth, right? You only take bits and pieces, which is when you actually enjoy eating it. Similar thing applicable to your studies as well. Don't try to finish the entire thing in one sitting or in one lot. Take it one by one, little by little, rest, go for the next after a short break or something and complete it, right? Instead of cramming things together, okay? so. Just remember a pizza or a roti when you sit down to eat. And that's how you need to go about your studies, all right? And another thing that I always tell my children, and I think it really works, is learn to eat the big frogs first. I'm not saying literally eat them, right? Eating the big frogs first. What does it mean? You know, always start. I repeat, always start with the most difficult tasks first. When you start with the most difficult task or the chapter or the subject, things and life becomes little bearable and stress-free. What we normally do, tough ones, we leave it for the end. The difficult ones, last minute, right? That is going to stress you out. And you know what? You'll have all these stomach upset and palpitations and, you know, restlessness in your sleep because you know that mountain is in front of you and you've not started the climb. I would say start from the mountain top or start from the biggest mountain first. And when you crack the most difficult task, then the rest of it becomes easier for you and you'll have more time in your hands. Practice it and see the difference. So learn to eat the big frogs first.
Okay, coming to examinations, the magic word in exam is not fast or too slow. That's not the right approach, but consistency and persistence. Being consistent and being persistent about it, you will do it. I want to do it. You know, that attitude is what's going to make you crack the exams well. Have genuine faith in your preparation and don't leave anything to chance. Know exactly what is required for each exam. Understand each subject. Ask your teachers, quiz your teachers, you know. Challenge your teachers if they are open to it provided, all right? You should know your exam format for each subject. Is it multiple choice question? Is it short answer? Is it going to be an essay? How many questions? So please uh, be prepared on the exam format and that will help you address it better. In your house, you know, with your parents' permission, of course, stick around. You know, I, I happen to see one of my, my son's classmates, um, you know, behind her door. She has written down all the formulae, uh, you know, math and, you know, certain um, physics, all those, you know, formulae behind her door. And, she's, and she keeps rubbing it, writing again, like a board, okay? Uh, but it helps her to, whenever she sees it, it helps her to remember all these formulae and other things. So... Around the house, of, it needn't be your door, but if you have somewhere that you can stick around the most important facts, a few formulae, maybe a few positive quotes, examples, right? And whenever you see them, recite it, read it out loud. That will help you learn and retain. Please do solve your past year's question papers, okay? It's very important, uh, at least the last 10 years, so you'll have an idea of the pattern of the question paper that you can expect. Very important, so invest in that, past question papers, identify areas of weakness and address them, uh, become, com become comfortable with the vocabulary that's used in exams, you know, exam terminologies, exam vocabulary, something that you need to get used to, um, perfect the pace you must work at. Find out what is your speed, what is your style. Some of you may be an early morning bird, some of you may be an evening bird. But, you know, to be able to understand what is your body cycle, what is your body rhythm, that's important. It's not whether morning is good or nighttime studying is good. Nothing good or bad or right or wrong about it. What suits you, what you find convenient, all right? But make sure that you follow that pace. Not one day midnight, one day morning, one day. You know, that will upset your body schedule as well, biological rhythm. So stick to that and follow that. Your timing is very critical, whatever you do, okay? At the time of exam, read the paper thoroughly, plan your approach, identify questions that you can do immediately, okay? Put the questions in the order you wish to do them. Don't work out answers, but you know you can work out the key points. Um, and most importantly, your confidence will build with more difficult questions, right? So whatever you know, attempt it, all right? And the rest of it should come with your confidence. Um, remember some of the clue words which come in exams, uh, especially, you know, when they want you to explain certain things. So they, these are the words, define, answer briefly, explain, differentiate, compare, give scientific reasons write short notes, describe, give an example of, you should know the difference between these words. What does it exactly mean and what is expected of you, right? And it is all different. Def definition is different from comparison. Comparison is different from describe, right? Describe is different from define. So understand these concepts and terminologies, okay? And if you don't know any particular answer, don't spend your time mulling over it. Move to the next one because timing matters, right? Move on. Uh, when it comes to multiple choice questions, eliminate those answers you think are incorrect, okay? And beware of careless mistakes. Many times this is what happens, very careless mistakes, you know. Maybe you miss the procedure, maybe you miss the steps and you lose marks. So following that systematic pattern is important. Plan your answers well. Um, if you're asked to draw diagrams, make sure you have a sharp pencil with you or, you know, you have, uh, it's clear, it's legible, it's big and visible and accurate, all right? So that's very important. Accuracy is very important, especially when it is math and physics, all right? And a few more tips before I close. What are the keys to study time management, organization? Note-taking, you know, when you're sitting down for your remote learning classes, please get into the habit of taking down notes, whether it's in your notebook or in a rough book, 
get into the habit of taking notes even when you study this is another golden tip when you sit down to study read something write it down read something write it down when you write it helps you remember things better all right and most importantly concentration matters pay attention during online classes take notes keep an organized notebook ask questions in class plan a definite study time and place for each day don't cram for us the night before a test or an exam and lastly what i would like to share with you is time management plan either by activity plan by time or plan by priority what do we mean by activity wise let's say you want to do studies you want to do some music you want to listen to something you want to spend time with your friends so that's activity wise okay you can plan your day activity wise you can also plan time wise like let's say 8 o'clock to 12 i'm going to do this 12 to 2 i'm going to do this 2 to this i want to do this it can be flexible and it will overlap not strictly but at least by time concept you have differentiated and you have segregated your priorities all right and lastly planning by priority what is important to you today do you want to spend time with your tuition do you want to spend time on taking notes do you want to spend time on like you know doing your uh, last week assignment so what is your priority for the day go and plan your time accordingly all right and like i said it's important that you give time for your family as well you know that's something i think parents are disconnected and children are disconnected these days children are online parents are online or parents are busy in their own world there's a complete disconnect and the sad fact is you're sitting in the same room in the same house but you're hardly communicating with each other because everybody's in their own world so be aware be conscious take time spend time with your family talk to them have quality time have meals together right so this is something that will bring the entire um, you know group together within the house and it's really really important for your mental peace of mind and for you to express your worries or anxieties and for parents on the other side to understand your child and what is troubling or bothering them i think that connect is very important that you're available to them parents and students and children that you reach out to your parents when you need their help all right so that's an important thing and most importantly to stay positive remember you are not alone you're not the only one going through this we are all going through this together we are all on the same uh, we are all in the same ocean but we are all in different boats going through the same storm in life right but it's about how positive you are so like going back to from where i started always have a grateful heart and a sense of gratitude remember it will not be like this way forever this too shall pass i go back to my first slide this too shall pass it's just about trusting in god believing in yourself that this is a momentary phase and we are all going to make it together please get the beauty sleep sleep is very important okay something again lacking and losing out on uh, make sure that you sleep enough do not stop learning learn to meditate whether it's prayer or yoga or some activity do that practicing gratefulness having a gratitude you know um, counting every day you know your blessings two or three that's enough right but start your day and end your day with a note of gratitude get moving and work out your muscles exercise jump if you don't have a place to go stand wherever you are and jump 100 times that's enough right to let your energy out and to build in some good hormones into your system pick up a hobby there's so much you can do baking music whatever it is coding whatever you're interested in pick up a hobby stay connected with your family friends digitally have your zoom meeting whatsapp video call or whatever but stay connected call out reach out to your cousins your family your friends and do a small maybe you can have a small online party also right just celebrate because that's the only thing we have with us right and write a journal apart from your notebook and other things keep a small journal or a personal diary where you write down your thoughts and feelings whether it's happy moments sad moments stressful moments fearful moments write it down and that would help you take and move ahead in life and with that i come to the end of the session i hope that you have 
benefited and learned something and I would like to tell you that you know it's all in your hands and most importantly to trust in God and to start your day with God as the center of your life because when you place God as the center of your life your studies falls in place your health falls in place your relationship is in place right because that is the central focus and most important foundation of everything that we do and if you learn to rely and trust that everything is just going to be possible for you but you need to do your part you can't say god you know it's like you don't study and you run to god and say god i have an exam tomorrow god's not going to help you right god gave you the opportunity to study god gave you the opportunity to have a good education god gave you the intelligence god gave you the mind god gave you the body make use of it and it's your responsibility to take charge and control of your life because you are the pilot of your life wish you all the very best and thank you so much for your time god bless you thank you jc ma'am for your inspiring session it is definitely going to guide all these children in their life dear children this year is dedicated to saint joseph and the cml theme of this year is saint joseph the greatest exemplar of family and mission let us all imbibe the exemplary quality of saint joseph in our life of service and responsibility i take this opportunity to thank all the teachers animators students and central team members a special thanks and appreciation to miss leeja and mr jason papachin who coordinated this event may god bless all of us jay jay mission lee ಭಾರತಮೇ ನಿನ್ ರಕ್ಷಾ ನಿನ್ ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಆಶಭೂವನಮೇ ನಿನ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ನಿನ್ ಕೈಗಳ ಸೋದರರೇ ಕೈಗೋರ್ತು ಮುನ್ನೇರುವಿನ್ ಸತ್ಯ ಕಾಹಳಂ ಮುಳಕ್ಕಿ ಮುನ್ನೇರುವಿನ್ ಚೆಮ್ಮಂಜ ಕುಳಿ ಬಿಡಿಕ್ಕಿಂ ಕೈಗಳ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ತುವಿನಾಯ್ ಪಣಿ ಎಡಕ್ಕಂ ಕೈಗಳ ವೈಲುಗಳೇ ವಿಲಂಜ ವೈಲುಗಳೇ ವಿಳವೆಡುಕ್ಕುವಾ ಞಂಗಲ ಅಣಿನಿರಕುನ್ನು ಸ್ನೇಹವಂ ತ್ಯಾಗವಂ ನುಗರ್ನು ಜಂಗಲ್ ಸೇವನತಿನ್ ದೂದರಾಯ್ ವರುನ್ ನಿದಾ ಕರಗಳಂ ತಿರಗಳಂ ಕಡನ್ನು ಜಂಗಲ್ ಸುವಿಶೇಷ ದೂದರಾಯ್ ವರುನ್ ನಿದಾ ಭಾರದಮೇ ನಿನ್ ರಕ್ಷಾ ನಿನ್ ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಆಶಭೂವನಮೇ ನಿನ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ನಿನ್ ಕೈಗಳ ಸೋದರರೇ ಕೈಗೋರ್ತು ಮುನ್ನೇರುವಿನ್ ಸತ್ಯ ಕಾಹಳಂ ಮುಳಕ್ಕಿ ಮುನ್ನೇರುವಿನ್ ಮುನ್ನೇರುವಿನ್ ಮುನ್ನೇರುವಿನ್